sugar leaf to make it, and not fan leaves. Yeah, you got to have something to extract. Right, right. And we didn't like, know, man. No, we're, no, no, I get kids, it. Well, man. yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah. so, yeah, so, you know, we started messing around with it, and I wasted pounds and pounds of weed trying to figure out the parameters of what it was actually going to take to do it. And, uh, you know, it took me probably six months to just constant right, trial right. and error to really get it down to where like cool we're getting like a dry crumble consistency that mm-hmm. we're going for i'm starting to understand the parameters of what's going on and you know understanding a little bit of how Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Jug Dealers podcast. All things cannabis and lifestyle related brought to you by the good people at 5.8 Distributing. And now we have jugdealers.net. Today, we are here with my good buddy, Jeremy Johnson from Harmony Extracts. And we're here to talk about all things hash with Jeremy. Welcome to the studio. It's good to have you. Thanks for having me in today, guys. Yeah, sure. absolutely. And, you know, it's kind of, you know, just kind of let you guys know where we're going to go today. Today, we kind of want to establish, you know, who Jeremy is, kind of where he's at in the extract game and, you know, kind of some of your your history with that. And then we are, we're going to move this into a bit of a panel discussion because there's always that, you know, everybody's got their preferred extract method, whether it's straight water, different <coughs> gases, you know, rosins, all this sort of thing. And and then honestly, uh, like, like I've uh, you told everybody, I mean, I'm, I'm in the game and it's like half the, these terms, I don't know. So I know uh, next episode, I, I think we're going to get, you know, pretty deep into, you know, some of the terminology and, and technology and techniques and things like that. But for today, you know, we want to get a little slice about who you are, how you got to where you're at going on for a bit. Big shout out to my buddy, Grambo, the man behind the mic, the man behind the cameras. Uh, he has been really working hard to get us across the finish line with that. So thank you very much. Um, but without, uh, without any further ado, why don't you tell us a little bit about where you grew up, you know, um, who you are, kind of what shaped you as a, you know, as, as a young lad. And then we can kind of, uh, you know, go from there. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, man. Uh, so uh, I was originally born in Washington State, but uh, beautiful. Ended up moving out here in grade school and uh, kind of grew up in the in the Colorado world. Nice, nice. That's not that's not so bad. I know I grew up in the Midwest and I wanted to be in the Colorado world uh, growing up, and it took me until my adult life to get here. So nice, you got here early. Did you go to high school local? Uh, yeah, I went to Lakewood High, man. Nice, yep. nice. Middle school, like I said, I started out. I think we moved in on my twelfth birthday. Actually. All right. Nice. All right. Sure. All right. All right. Good, good memories and a good time to probably be in Colorado, huh? Um, it was great, man. I, <laughs> you know, I, I kind of get a little spoiled here and uh, forget really how special it is until I start traveling a little bit more and right. go to new places and Right, right. And I actually, uh, I, I missed you in Spain. Um, was, I swear every booth I went to was like, Jeremy was just here. And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and, I, and I don't think you managed to find uh, find us over there because I know you want to talk to uh, Marianne about uh, uh, Crazy Hills, which we can chat a little bit about that as well. But, um, you know, it, it is fun. And, and coming back to Colorado, even traveling around the country, and I know that Gabe will say this as well, it is very refreshing to come back here. It it's, it's, you know, it's a nice state. And I know that you probably had a good time, you know, growing up here. Um, as far as your parents, parents go? Were they cannabis people? What, you know, kind of what was your home life like? Was it, uh, were you a rebel by doing what you got into it? How'd you get into uh, cannabis? Where were you out things? I, you know, it's, uh, I didn't have the best childhood growing up, man. My parents split when I was young. Gotcha. Um, you know, my mom raised me, my dad ended up, uh, committing suicide when mm. I was, when I was 11. So that'll, uh, that'll shape you obviously as a person that, that definitely it, it'll either make you or break you, I would assume. Yeah, no, that was tough, man. And it, uh, was a, you know, real life experience at mm-hmm. a young age, but you know, my dad always did have the passion for cannabis. I remember, mm. you know, when I was probably four years old going out in the basement sure. and he had a grow going on, Ah, and, you know, I knew what weed smelled like at a very young, very age. young right. age. So okay. you did have an impression on that. Then that's okay. You know, it's questions that we obviously like to ask because we, you know, you talk from everybody that's been from a very like, you know, strict religious, you know, background to then obviously people that have had, you know, a very open aspect with cannabis. So it's interesting to see where, where people's, you know, background comes from it. So obviously some of your earliest memories were romping downstairs, hanging out with the old man. And I can empathize that with, you know, with my situation. So it's, it's interesting to, to hear you say that. Um, so, all right. So, um, 
I mean, you, you, you knew what the smell of cannabis was before you can remember knowing what the smell of cannabis was. Oh yeah. I mean, that's one of my early childhood memories, which is kind of crazy. Uh, and you know, when that whole thing went down with my dad, it honestly made me kind of anti-drugs, anti-cannabis, sure. mm-hmm. all that stuff. Yep. Yep. You know, even into high school early on, I'd always be fucking with my friends. They, you know, you want to smoke, whatever. It's just not my thing. Sure. I mean? Sure. Sure. And no, be, I said, I said similar things myself. Yeah. I used to fuck with my, my buddies in class. They'd come in all high and I'd be dropping like subtle hints to the teacher. My friends did. Yeah, they're like, fuck with I, it's funny. I had similar situations with my parents where they, you know, both, both were involved with different drugs, we'll say. And because of that, I, I've never messed with a lot of different things. Right. Like I've never done cocaine or any, any powders because I was always like, Hey man, I know, I know what road that leads down. Right. Right. I've seen that. I don't, I don't, don't, don't want to go down that road. So I can, sure. I can definitely feel that sentiment. Yeah. No, it's a hundred percent. I mean, it ended up, it ended up ruining my dad's life, man. He got into Coke really bad to the point where he's shooting it up. Right. Right. That's right. crazy. It's, yeah. That's yeah. It's insane, man. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, so, you know, that's been a really good deterrent for me from getting into stuff mm-hmm. like that. Anytime I've ever, you know, dabbled down around anything other than cannabis, I've always kept it very right, right, minimal, right. You know, right, I mean, right, right. You know, you, you're really, <laughs> you're nailing the ethos of the podcast too, by keeping it pretty raw, you know, and that's, I mean, dude, that's, you know, that's what it does sometimes. You so, know, you know, happens. obviously, uh, early experience with cannabis, but not smoking it. Uh, and, and obviously, you know, a deterrent, which it, that, that's something that I've heard as well. You know, uh, it's a similar story that I've heard before where it's just, it did become a bit of a deterrent. So it took a little bit longer to come around to it. I know I personally wasn't using it at a real young age, at least not heavily at all. And mainly because I was involved in sports. So it was something that like, you know, um, yeah, obviously running around smoking dope wasn't, uh, the best thing to do from, 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 you know, a couple different aspects obviously reputation and performance you know i wouldn't consider it a performance yeah, no, drug. Definitely, <laughs> yeah coming up in the sports world man is, uh, yeah, yeah definitely frowned upon yeah what was yeah, your yeah. what was your sport in high school uh mainly baseball man nice. all right yeah nice. but definitely some football and basketball in there but baseball is the that was your passion sport. okay yeah. all right so obviously you were concentrating on that when when was your first smoking experience and and even as a two-part question you know did you get high uh, yes to both. <laughs> I mean, you know, no, it's, uh, you know, like I said, I always used to give my buddies a hard time, but I'd say, right. you know, it was all my friends smoked around me and everything. And, uh, one of my buddies actually worked at a porn shop, dude. And so we're, okay. we're hanging out one day okay. and he Didn't fucking, uh, <laughs> I, it, was, it was weird, right? <laughs> so we're hanging out one day and yeah. he took a Gatorade bottle and he fucking made it Ooh. into a bong. Yep. Right. And Been I'm there. S- sitting there watching these guys smoke and I'm like, that thing looks kind of cool, man. I <laughs> So, so I was like, you know what? Fuck it, dude. I'm going to, I'm going to give it a shot, man. And dude, I smoked it. And probably 10 minutes later, I, I remember walking up to my buddy. I'm like, dude, I I feel like I'm in a dream, but I can control it. Like this is is amazing, bro. How how old are you about this time? 16, 17, 17. 17. 17. Okay. All right. And, uh, I have a problem with uh, things when I really get into something I like, I, you go, go full bore. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, yeah. I have a feeling I, I see know where the story is going. I know this of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, so probably about three months after I smoked the first time, my buddy that uh, worked at the store, he was, he was slinging at the time. He's like, you know what, man? I don't, I don't want to move packs anymore. He's like, you want to take over my business? I'll give you a pound. I'll give you all my contacts. Okay. And uh-huh. next thing you know, man, I was the the plug for all these guys. <laughs> and and uh, I mean, I'm assuming the porn shop, wait, you know, wait, had a good, what years the plug. Now? Oh my God. Hold uh, on. No pun intended folks. No pun intended. You're pro- I mean, I, you're probably running some of my packs at that point. Cause I was running some big duffel bags in Colorado. Well, and then <laughs> we started off with the brick weed, man. And then, uh, <laughs> dude, I'll never the forget Leo the day I quit fucking around with the brick weed, man. It's me and my buddy used to go in together and we'd go get a bunch. Right. And we went and picked up probably 600 pounds, dude. Whoa. And we're, we're, dude, that's a grip. Oh, dude, <laughs> we're moving some for real. Weight. That's a grip. And so we're, boy thro- stuff. we're throwing it on his bed, dude, to separate it out. And we fucking broke his bed frame, dude. Wow. It literally collapsed the fucking bed frame. And he'd been wow. with some big girls. So, I mean, this was, you know, I mean, <laughs> yeah, Jared's got jokes now. <laughs> so it was, Watch uh, it. That's Grandpa's job. Oh, shit. The, the big girls, you mean? No. The, the, the jokes. The jokes. The jokes. <laughs> 600 pounds, man. That's a serious. Oh, dude. And this is. Hey, everybody, just wanted to let you know I will be down in South Africa. Yes, you heard that in South Africa for their 
Premier Green Cup, April 26th to 28th. That's a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, I will be judging there for their cup competition, and we're also a sponsor for New Millennium and some of our other products down there. So if you happen to be in South Africa in the Port Elizabeth area, April 26th to 28th, we'd love to see you. You can also find us at jugdealers.net for all things and all things associated jug dealer. Um, find us out on the road. Find us on the website, jugdealers.net. Thank you guys for listening. See you soon. Was it in duffel bags or was it? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. This is I hockey, mean, when I, used hockey get, bags, well, when I used to get the hockey bags from BC, <laughs> yeah. you'd get about 30 to 50 in a hockey bag. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, it's, you know. We Damn, were, that's a ton. lot of gear. We well, were, it's we're a quarter good. ton anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy, man. And uh, I really kind of reevaluated life at that point, right? Because <laughs> at that time, as you know, man, like those are for real felony charges. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh-huh. This is. And so yeah, problems uh, again. I was yeah. like, you know what, dude? Why why am I fucking around with all this bullshit weed, man? I I could just go sell kind bud, pick up fucking, mm-hmm. you know, mm, a twenty minimal pack. amount compared to yeah. what I'm fucking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Monetarily, it's still the same thing, right? Sure. And now I got better product to smoke on. I don't have as big of a. So you're like, can, I mean, yeah. back then too, like I mean, I was getting it for like thirty eight to four, and you could easily make a grand or two a pack. Oh yeah, you know what All I mean. Day. So it was yeah, it was good money back. Then. <laughs> oh yeah, it was twelve to fourteen hundred dollar quarter pound. All day. Nice. Yep. All day. <laughs> all day. Sixty dollar eights up, bro. Yeah. Those four hundred and eighty dollar ounces, man. Like, yeah, those, those were good I, days. I think I think good back, days. I you know, I've said to people, I think back then, you know, in 2001, <laughs> 2002, the most expensive pound I ever sold was uh was puck for like eight grand for a pound. And yeah. like across the board, it was just like, yeah, people pay people pay they they Came, they they, they came to you. They came to you with the money in their hand. Like Happy. they just came to you. There was no fronting. There was no anything. They just came to you with the money. I mean, it's cool. Sorry, I was trying to go back in time. It's cool growing up in Colorado because you definitely had acts. You know, um, you know, I'm a bit older than you first, but then you know, growing up on the East Coast, like all we had access to for the for a while was the brown weed. Where right. you know, here in Colorado with Fort Collins. With, uh, I remember, you know, even being in high school in the nineties, like if you had buddies who had sisters or brothers that went to school in Colorado, they'd always come home Christmas break always. with like the dankest bud, yeah, you know, yeah, Boulder, yeah, yeah, yeah. Boulder and Fort Collins. It's funny because Fort Collins, I always felt like back in the day, Fort Collins never got the credit it deserves, but Fort Collins was arguably putting out more and better weed than Boulder just you because had, you had, it was an yeah, ag school, yeah, you know? Yeah. And you had, you had the canyons right there, you know, and they were relatively accessible for, you know, where they at in town and not, you know, things obviously changed quite a bit as far as the density of the growers up there. But yeah, I, I, I fully, I fully agree with you and haven't been up there for a good while myself, you know, but, but that was a time where it really was, it was, they didn't have the name, but you definitely knew. I mean, I grew up in Kansas City. It's like if anybody came back from school from Colorado, they were coming back with some good weed. There was no question. So you know where that weed came from out here, man? It wasn't coming from Boulder and Fort Collins, man. Where? Up in the mountains, dude. Are you talking Paonia and stuff like that? Nah, man. Up in like Breck, uh, Blue River, yep, up in yep. those areas, man. Uh, so that's where I got. I don't, that's not, where I got the puck from. My boy used to grow the puck up on. I think he was on Peak Four. Peak four or five, but he used to have a spot. He was had like one of the only spots in Bolt in uh, Brack where he had a basement. And you're absolutely right. Uh, not only Crested that, Butte, a couple areas were not cranking only that, out. Northern some heat. New Mexico used to like when I was down in Alleghen, New Mexico. All it was, all our shit went all north. The guys came down from Denver and picked it all up by the yeah. fucking boatload. So it was like you know a lot of this Colorado weed was New Mexico weed at that time. Fair enough. <laughs> so, you make, so you make that switch from the 600 pounds that's bread baking or bed breaking, <laughs> the, to, the bed breaker, the bed breaker <laughs> to the epiphany moment, the bed moving breaker better moment. bud and stuff like that. There's, there's your hook. You're the bed breaker moment. How's, I mean, how's that go for you? What, what's going on there? I mean, obviously that was a transition, right? Right. We're moving crazy amounts of weight with a bunch of different people, man. And you know, that kind of brought in, it slowed everything down for a little bit. Sure. You know, as I'm building up a new clientele and meeting new connects and everything like that. Um, but it was honestly, obviously the best move I've ever made. So, and then, I mean, and, and obviously, and I can see this progression, right? Happening. Obviously you're, you know, you're a brick, you go, well, why don't I go there? Now I can see the the progression to, to extract as well. How long did that take before you went, you know what? I, I, I think there's more to this, or I think maybe we're stopping a, a step too early, if you will. You know what I mean? Which like, if you look internationally, there's, you know, culturally speaking, it's like people look at flower in Spain and it's like, well, you, you, you didn't go far enough. 
Right. You know, you, you, you stopped a step too early. You haven't, you, you know, now you need to extract it, you know? So it's interesting even thinking about like, thinking about it like French cooking. It's like, they'll always take that next step to clean it up a little bit, you know, whether it's, you know, uh, sift out or, or, or strain out like the, the, the carrots and the onions and the potatoes to make it a pure smooth gravy. Well, you don't have to do that, but French always like to take that, that, that extra yeah, step. No, I mean, dude, forever. I mean, we threw our term away, right? Right. Only thing to do with it was to make a, uh, you know, bubble hash or whatever. And let's be honest, man, like we're, we were nowhere near where we are with, oh. with what we've got going on right. today. Right. So there wasn't like a huge market for the, the concentrates and stuff no. like that. Um, but you know, as you know, we were moving again, once we got into, to move in the, the kind bud, man, I mean, we were picking up 10 pounds every two or three days. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, yeah. And it got to the point where I was like, you know, why am I doing this? For this guy, man, I mean, we're moving ridiculous amounts of weight. <laughs> I'll just go grow my own shit, man. Ah, the and, natural progression. Yeah, so we, I'll never forget this shit, dude. We went and got, <laughs> we got one light. I bought a four by eight tray with one light for it. And we went and got like just a little tub from, from Home Depot. Where, where, sure. where did you get the light? Did you get it down at the old grocery store in Colfax? Oh, you know it, brother. Yeah, yeah. that's where we all went, yeah, baby. Right, that was right. the only game in town there for a long yeah, time. Yeah, it was. It was. Dude, that lady that worked there to this day will forever be a legend, man. <laughs> if you it's know not what I'm even, talking about, you know exactly It's not even about. there anymore. I think it's like a mushroom shop or a yeah, it's, it's gone, something man. weird now. But oh, Well, yeah. a lot of them. No, that was a trip, dude. And, and, you know, I remember making that jump and it's like, you'd go down there to the grocery store, you'd go buy your shit. And then you'd have a buddy show up after you. Mm -hmm. Of course. And so you're walking out as he's walking in, he's packing all the shit up in his car. Yeah. Driving it to another friend's house and you're picking it up a couple days later to take it back to the grow. I mean, it was, uh, Facts. yeah, those were, those were sketchy time. I remember parking on the street behind Colfax over on 14th parking a couple blocks away and literally having to walk back and forth from the car a couple times <laughs> oh, yeah. just to, and I remember going there too and seeing <laughs> gear. and seeing cops actually posted up across the street you know right um ever I mean consequently ever get in trouble knock on wood now man all right good for you bro yeah. good for you I, I I always got lucky man I don't you know I you know I had little I was better to be lucky than I, good I've had little things in my you know I've got I think the most I've gotten busted for is like uh, like an ounce and I've you know definitely sat in a cell jail cell not prison but yeah, just yeah, jail yeah, cell yeah. overnight a couple times but I am also fortunate in the fact <laughs> that during those times uh, I did not have any issues so I mean I always you know so so first off when did you really start to get into like extraction? Like what year were you? Cause I know, I feel like you were, you were one of the open blasters. Oh dude. Uh, so the very first time I ever messed around with butane was in 2005. Uh, so you're, you're, I mean, dude, you, I mean, it's funny because you know, one of the reasons I really wanted to have you on and build this out is because you really are one of the pioneers when it comes to, I mean, I didn't learn about open blasting until I think 2010 um, trying to think it would have been like for me. Yeah. 2010. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, 2010. yeah. No five is your way ahead. Of uh, yeah. Well, wow. ahead of the game. Well, dude, I'm, I don't know if you guys remember, but you know, high times back in the day in the back of the, uh, at the magazine, they used to have like letters that people would write in and just random knowledge, whatever they're working on, whatever the case may be. And we read an article about making hash with butane and how it's like this crazy fucking hash. And it, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, we're talking, you know, a couple sentence type thing. We're like, right. Well, let's fuck around with it, man. So, uh, it, we went and got one of those yellow wasp catchers, man. Hey, little plastic wasp catchers. Mm -hmm. Dude, I went and packed a bunch of fucking uh, fan leaf in there because we know what the fuck we're doing. Of course. You got to start somewhere. Dude, we go blast it, get nothing out of it. Literally nothing, right? Like, and I looked at my brother. I was like, dude, that was that was the dumbest shit we've ever done. I'm never doing that again. <laughs> dude, that was stupid, man. <laughs> and uh, so he comes back short time later, and he's like, dude, we fucked up, man. He's like, I was over at our buddy's house, and he's like, we... We were using sugar leaf to make it, and not fan leaves. Yeah, you got to have something to extract. Right, right. And we didn't like, know, man. No, we're, no, no. I get kids, it. Well, man. yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah. so, yeah, so, you know, we started messing around with it, and I wasted pounds and pounds of weed trying to figure out the parameters of what it was actually going to take to do it. And, uh, you know, it took me probably six months of just constant right, trial right. and error to really get it down to where, like, cool, we're getting, like, a dry crumble consistency that mm -hmm. we're going for I'm starting to understand the parameters of what's going on and, you know, understanding a little bit of how, how this stuff works. And you're not running flour because there's no one in their right mind. No, not at that time. Pounds Absolutely. to sell and five it, it grand. Was, well, it was worth too much. You didn't need to. Exactly. Well, no, yeah. it wasn't even that. Like, dude, when we first started making this on a regular basis, I couldn't even get rid of it. 
Right, People right. There was no was. market for if it. If I told you hash, you're thinking, you know, the black bubble hash or, or 100%, you know, yeah. 100%. Or whatever. There was no market for it. They didn't even know what it was. They didn't, like, uh, I, I remember hearing of this mystical hash oil, and it's like, well, what do you do? I, yeah, oh, was, you can brush it on a joint. I mean, I'm just saying that's the first way I kind of heard about what, it, but it was like, I, I discussed with Bill. I, I, had, I had seen what was called bud oil in 1993, I think. Well, even but Adam, remember was, Adam Dunn talked about like the oil that they would get out of Jamaica and bring it up. So it's like, there was like this, you know, but, but again, that was a specialized market and people knew right. what it was and, and, and they were looking for it here. And at that time, and even in 2010, when we were doing a little bit of our own, you know, when people actually started doing some more open blasting themselves, it became a little bit more like, you know, I don't want to say common knowledge, but it was like definitely one of those things, like people started messing around with it a lot more. Right. I mean, we were in houses doing, people were doing a PVC, you know, you oh, can yeah. even go to, that's what I did. You yeah. could go to a, so but you I could did. also go to, a, of course. But then at a certain point in, in 2010 ish, you could go to a, a glass shop and get a glass tube oh, yeah. that was made for blasting. So it had gotten, you know, well known enough by then. But still, 2005, 2006, I mean, you're way, yeah, ahead, way of the ahead of the curve. Oh, dude, dude. there was, you couldn't even, to the point where you, couldn't even find you could do it all day long. Were people discussing, were you in the forums? Uh, I was in the forums. There wasn't, dude. There was no chatter yeah. about it, dude. You couldn't find it. How did you consume? Right. Did you guys just put it into joints? Did you? Were you hot knifing it? We're we're hot knifing it and just putting it on flour. Yeah, baby. The main way it was on flour, yeah, painting, yeah. painting it on your joints type <laughs> yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Yep. Or just putting it right on top of a bowl, letting it melt in. You yeah, know, yeah. Like, yeah. So where? Yeah. How? Okay, so where does the evolution go from there? Where do you like how, I guess, cause that all, I guess is going to coincide c coincide with you. When did well, you jump? Well, when did you jump into the legal market? I was just going to say, so the legal market started in 2012. I believe that there 10, was some more. 10, no, 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 no. When it all went, when it all there, that was when the medical thing, when stores actually opened was in, was in yeah, uh, but we January were back 2012. Bro. Yeah. Yeah. No, but it, it, the first stores that recreational so those, I'm right, talking so, about. Well, recreational was until 2014. Uh, it was 2012 that the vote was in, and in 2014 they actually yeah. no no 2012 they had was the vote. 2013 yeah. it legalized. Yes, and there you go. There you go. Actually, now you you could get the medical scale. store start as back as early as 2009 ish, right? Yeah. 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 So, yes. Well, and before that, Colorado's had medical since 2002, but they didn't have stores, right? They did, but there's only like five of them. Okay. And it was okay. super underground, weird, right? Like not, you know, it was like 09 when I remember like stores started popping up. You could get a car so easily. What, yeah. What was that at the time? Like you had to have a membership or you had to have yep. Ah, okay. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. you had to have a for real medical problem. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like dude, let's hey, be real. Wait man. a minute, like, bro. I had a bad back. I had, a, I had, a really I had asthma as a teenager. Uh -huh. That doesn't I had, work. I had a real right, bad back. Right. It's in like 20, cancer. 29. I got a bad back. And so yeah, it, no, this is when it was like, dude, you got to have something yeah. serious. I mean, it I was, guess. I think there was like five. It was literally like cancer, AIDS. Like, it, there was very few. So, were they things getting, you could even get it for, were yeah. they getting the supply at the time from the backpack boys? Yeah. 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 Okay. And, and yeah. when this, so in, in 2008, uh, the Obama administration changed the rules. The Cole memorandum. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And that was like, Hey, as long as you're following your state guidelines, we're not going to come in and fuck with you anymore. Yep. Right. Yeah. And so that was a godsend, man. I was all like, Oh shit. Now I can be a caregiver. Right. Like we can have right. you know, five and patients. That was a and flood there in 09. Cause I actually moved into Fort Collins in 09 and it already had started by that point, you know, more like oh, 08, yeah. like you said. Oh, yeah. No, and I, and I, I mean, by the time I got there it was full blown, like you could go get a, get a card easily. There were shops all over town. Easy. Yeah. I mean, it was I mean, dude, the sales wait pitch line was for like, two hours of the damn doctor. I'd walk into the way. stores of the joint already roll. Be like, Hey man, like try this real quick. <laughs> like, damn. Like I need all of that. You're right. You're right. 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 Oh, the back so, so days, you're, you're growing. Yep. You're, you got what? A, a couple home grows. You got a couple like. So we, it's kind of fun. So we ended up with about, we had five houses set up and we had the same paperwork at all five houses. So as long as, you know, <laughs> yeah. as long as and this, is, same this is as I remember, cause I was in, I was in that same thing. This is back when you had. Pieces of paper with people's names, correct oh, yeah. information on them, and you yeah. had you, you had to have it on the door, right? Yeah, carry had, them on. You, you had the red cards, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. got the patient name on yeah. it. It's got you know the caregiver name on it. Like it's all right. That actually yeah. saved my ass one time, man. In uh, what was it? I think 2012, dude. I was uh, maybe 2011. I was driving as the night before Thanksgiving, and I get pulled over. Yeah, I've heard this cop pulled me over for no exhaust on my Evo, right? Yeah. <laughs> so he pulls me Typical. over, and uh, I'm being cool with him, and he's like, "Oh, you got anything? In the car?" I'm like, "Oh, I got a little bit of weed," and I'm talking. I had like 
a baggie with like maybe a bowl left in it. Mm -hmm. I've got a hash jar that's got like scrapings in it. Right. And a pipe, right? So I give it to the guy and I give him my red card and it had expired like two weeks before that. And I knew that was, you know, hopefully he was going to be cool about right. it. Right. <laughs> Looks card. Oh, this is expired. And then the hash is illegal anyway. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Dude, you go in the store and buy hash. Like it's not legal. He's like, no, this is a felony, man. Dude wrote me a felony ticket for maybe, maybe 0. 0.2 grams of hash. Uh, if uh -oh. that. Um, so, uh, at the time I was my buddy's caregiver. So when I went to court, I was like, yo, that was, that was my patient stuff. That wasn't my stuff. Ow. DA threw it out, man. Yes. So you yes. almost, so yes. in, in answer to your earlier question, you almost got, he was close. <laughs> yeah. He said he, he said he was close. He said he was close. So when did you actually, you know, when did you jump into the legal market and how did you jump? I mean, like, so you know, a I lot mean, of us started in various depends ways. Depends on how you want to look at it. You know, we were backpacking stuff in caregiver model and, in 2009. Sure. And then uh, in 2011, they started issuing the badges. Yeah. And uh, my wife ended up getting pregnant. And, you know, I kind of seen the writing on the wall with sure. how everything was going. I was like, dude, I might have 20 lights set up in my house, but how am I going to compete with a guy that has a warehouse with 400 lights? Right, you know? right, right. Alan. And so, yeah, so I went down. This is the dog track days, man. I don't, I don't know if you're here for that. Uh, I was there for the dog track. Day. I think my original badge number was like 4,000 something. And my new, my badge now is still 7,000. That's awesome. I think we're over a hundred thousand. Something. Oh yeah. Something crazy. <laughs> yeah. I think my first badge number was in the first like 2000, man. Yeah. I had to go down three different times to get my badge. Cause at the time, there's so many people going yeah, down. Yeah. It only allow 15 people a day. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I had problems because I had to get a letter from the state of Montana and they didn't even have records of my arrests. So I actually, it, it, I ended up having to go yeah. three or four times, but yeah, oh, it was no, a was nightmare. You had to same. go to each municipality, get yeah, anything right, you've right, ever right. been charged with. Not convicted, anything you've been charged, charged with. with. Yeah. And then full fingerprinting. The whole fucking, like, I had to be fingerprinted like nine yeah. times. I think I was badge 18,000, and I was probably there like 18 months after you guys are talking right, about right, it. Right, right, right. That many applications. Well, they still hadn't figured it out, it turns out. Oh, it was a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, go figure. Go so, figure. So, uh, yeah, so I went down and got the badge, and, you know, we kind of kept doing the backpack thing while I was kind of transitioning into to doing full time cannabis at that point. Nice. 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 And then, and then as far as let's get, cause really when it comes to like a lot of the tech of the hash and really like where your where your head's at, I, I kind of want you to, to, to save that a bit for, you know, for the next episode with, with all the guys, but let's talk a little bit about harmony and kind of where you're at right now, where that started with and kind of, cause that's, that's where we're at. You know, obviously today you've got cup wins under your belt. I, you know, I'd like to hear a bit about that as well. You know, just kind of give us, you know, a little bit of an annotated version of where you're at today. And, yeah. I mean, and kind of started it really goes back to uh getting uh uh the lead extraction position at mahatma okay um i don't know if you guys are familiar definitely right? definitely yeah, yeah that business, was a, that was a big early brand yeah mm -hmm. i mean yeah i mean we were at one point we were the biggest brand d1 yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 yep. um so you know that's really where we went through the trials and tribulations that's when we went from the transition of open blasting to closed loop i mean Dude, I streamlined open blasting in Mahama. We were running 40 to 50 pounds of material a day open blasting with me and two other guys. <laughs> it's a lot of gas, and this, folks. And just so everybody gas. understands, this is pre-C1, D1 labs and yeah, all the rest yeah, of that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No had, blast room. We had a shed set up in the back. <laughs> we went, we'll just put in a shed. Dude, you, <laughs> know the, you know the food warmers you see when it's oh, yeah. the cater man, like the water Oh yeah. yeah, so we had five of those lined up. And we had these wooden dowels with uh, stainless steel tubes, right? And so you'd slide four tubes in. You could fit about 150 <laughs> grams of material per tube. And then you'd have uh, five cans of butane per tube, right? Wow. So get boxes and boxes and boxes Dude, I hope you all, I hope you all recognize the history lesson that y'all are getting right wow. now because this is real talk wow. right wow. now. Dude, real wow. talk. We were going through nine to ten master cases of butane a day. There's 96 cans of butane in a master case. Oh. Uh, Oh, like wow. I'm talking a 55 <laughs> gallon yeah. drum, right? Right. Fill right. that bitch up at the end of the day, and no right? law, Every and day. no law, Every and day. no laws were being broken at the time. <laughs> Somehow, no, no, no. It was no. a very gray area. Yeah, right? super gray, but it was very gray. It was exploited. Fifty uh, shades of gray. Yeah. but it was cool, man. We, we had like a, a wooden arm that came down with a bungee cord and a carabiner <laughs> clip, dude. So you get your cans on there, drop it. Oh, you know, he's high tech stuff, line. guys. High tech, dude. This is yeah, real life. By the time you got the last. 
last one started, the first one's and, done. And, 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 we were, and we were calling it medicine. Yes, we were. Yeah. Yes, we were. Wow. So, you know, <laughs> any awesome. single run, we'd have 100 cans of butane boiling off and evaporating at the same time. <laughs> that is crazy. Wow. Yes. All right. All right. It, it was pretty wild, man. Um, and, and so, so wow. when did, so did you go from there to uh, Harmony? Was that something that you, yeah. How did that, how did that kind of get rolling? Yeah. So, you know, we. You know, we did our thing in Mahatma. It kind of ran its course. The owners did some things I didn't really agree with, man. One, sure. of, the, one of the biggest things I seen wrong was, you know, we would extract anyone and everyone's material and we all go in the same packaging, right? And it'd say ABC grow. But, you know, at the end of the day, it says Mahatma. It says OG Kush. Right. And last time you got Mahatma OG Kush is the best thing you ever got. Right. And then this time. It's, right. It's black right. And dog right. Shit, right. Right. And it's like, and, and at the time, you know, everything's so new. They're like, we every, can white label. Well, everyone on. would blame <laughs> the extractor, right? If, of course. Yeah. If the of oil course. came out black. It wasn't because you had a shit grow or no, shit. Yes. No, well, because that was everything was, you, well, you know, this, you could just make anything into gold at that point. Right. That was the thought process. And we'll, and we'll go into this, into the panel, but that, that actually starts to lead you down the road of why butane has had the decline, you know? Oh, for sure. For sure. So, you know, we went through the trials and tribulations there, really got the machines dialed in, man. I mean, when when the closed loops first came out, the, the people making it were doing just that. They were making the mm -hmm. machines, right? right? They weren't running them like no, were. No, no, it's true. And so we, we really put them through the paces, man. And, and you guys were running them, and, and you guys were at the point where you were you had them running 24 hours a day, am I right? Uh, we weren't. We were running two shifts. Uh, yeah. We were running or 18 a back day. Back in but. the day, man, we had three Motex and six ETS 1300 machines. Um, so, I mean, it was, I mean, we're running a hundred plus pounds a day and this is, you told me a number Fourteen, as I remember, well, just out of curiosity, what's the most, I remember you told me a pretty crazy number. What's the most you've run in a year? What's the most you've produced in a year? Uh, 1.2 million grams. 1.2 million grams. Yeah. That's, so it's that, amazing. One year. Yeah. It's that's, amazing. And, and again, I mean, obviously if you do some reverse math on that and you think about how much product that actually is, it's. Thousands. Oh, it's, <laughs> thousands. It's a lot. Thousands. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot, folks. Uh, feel free to do the math. Uh, if anybody wants to comment and, on that and let us know so exactly how much, with roughly on five percent average. So uh, average. we started. I started kind of talking to to my partner in 2015, and you know, initially it started out uh, that I was helping him with the building design and sure. stuff like that. Um, and then it got to a point where like, hey, well, you know, we'd like to just bring you on and make you a partner within the excellent, company. Excellent. And obviously, I mean, you were, you were early in a lot of the tech there. You were, you were, you know, pushing the tech, you know, obviously you've won awards for this. Correct. Um, if you want to comment on that a little bit, or maybe even one that you're, you know, most proud of, but you know, it's definitely something where I'm, I'm definitely curious and I want our, you know, our listeners to understand kind of, you know, what, what, what clout you've got with it. So, yeah, I think like personally I'm up over, I, I'm thinking I'm at like 104 awards or something like that. Oh, okay. Well, and they've, uh, now if you've lost track over 100, then that's a shitload. It's, it's, <laughs> I've been very fortunate. You, you've uh, run the circuits, bro. I, I I mean, was like, we've, we've been passionate about it for a long time. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, me, congratulations. That's this really isn't amazing. Just, uh, this isn't just about the money, right? This right. is something that I love this plant. She's done a lot for me. Sure. And I try to give back to her at the same sure. time. You sure, know what I mean? sure. And, and my whole team expresses that, you know, I don't have time for egos. If you think you're the greatest thing ever, like you're not going to make There's it on a, my team. Right. And you There's guys don't have a big operation. You have an operation that focuses on cranking out the heat. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, and I, I even like the name to me, it's like harmony. It's, you know, in harmony with the plant. I've always said, you know, a lot, and we've talked about on the show, the show, even like specifically the secret life of plants and talking about, you know, plants and, 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 you know, do they have actual feelings or not and things like that. And I always had these theories about, you know, it, it, we've seen a situation where people had the right genetics, had had the right equipment, had the right environment, everything else, but they were trying to take advantage of the plant. She just wouldn't put out. No, man. You know what I mean? She just, and be, the, the love wasn't there. And the only thing I can have, I didn't have any evidence to back it up. It was just kind of a hippie, you know, theory that if you didn't put the love in, she wouldn't give the love out, which we've all seen, but it actually turns out that it's real. No, it's real. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I've watched brands, numerous brands over the years right. go from being, you know, the greatest thing out there. And then they think that the brand is just going to carry it. And they, they don't take care of the people in the right. team, right? Well, you right. got you guys have sustained through uh, an extremely challenging market, and you're definitely still one of the more relevant brands out there, and and you, you always have been. In in a market where you know Denver really is an extract market these days, 
right? When it really talks about like what's Denver known for these days, it still it is we are, the extract yeah. game, and and it's still there's some really high quality good brands out there, and you guys you know stand up and, and stand out. So you know, congratulations to that because I, I do feel it. like that's like that's what Colorado <clears throat> has has kind of stuck with and and continued to do really really well. You know, Mike, can I tell you where to go get some great flour? Hopefully, you got a buddy that's doing it in his basement because I can't tell you a good dispensary hardly anymore, but you can definitely get some amazing there, extracts. There's here. a couple places. It, still, it exists, but you have to look, I think, a little harder these days. Oh, it's, it's <laughs> you can probably count them on, on one hand. Right, you know I mean? right, right, right. So just out of curiosity, is there one cup win, one win that really stands out for you as being, you know, really special to you? There's, Outs, there's outside two. the Clementine challenge, of course. Of course. Of course. <laughs> well, we got to talk about that because that was, uh, to this day, the way that that was set up. Let's just talk about that real quick. Okay. If you guys don't know, Gabe, I'm sure you do, but Gabe used to run the grow over at Sacred Seed. He was the man over there. Right. This man grows some of the best weed I've had, hands down, <laughs> for sure. I appreciate that. And they put on this really cool competition where Gabe cultivated the same flower, and they gave it to five different companies. Six, to, six different companies. Six different companies. One being CO2, but we still want to include them. <laughs> I do recall. And, and, you know, for CO2, it was good, but it's still CO2. CO2. Right. Yeah. If you're on CO2, it's just so you can tell people you're on CO2. That's my That's a opinion. different story. We'll talk about it on the but, panel. Uh, <laughs> but everybody got the exact same material. And it was right. like, hey, we want to see who actually makes the best hash. And so, well, and, the, and that was the, the big thing about it was at the time, you know, there was a lot of talk about extraction artists, right. you know, and, and I wanted to prove or disprove, you know, is it can well, someone and, be and an extraction artist? That was a unique artist. concept at that time, too. Nobody had done anything like that. No, there wasn't anything like the grow off, which is obviously different still. And, and actually now. But I got the idea from I got the idea from Jake and Sam, so I'm not going to lie. Well, you know, <laughs> well, and, but it was still cool, man. Fair enough. You know, <laughs> and, and it was the. The people going in there trying the products that were actually the judges voting on it. So, yeah, yeah. You know, that part a, was was yeah, all. It us. wasn't just a couple of people in a closed door. Hundred, you know. hundred, hundred right, flights right, we sold. Right, hundred right. flights we sold. And so you know we were fortunate enough to be uh, one of the first companies in Colorado to start making the diamonds and sauce, and uh, nobody had really seen that. And yeah, really as far I always say to people, as far as uh, public public market. I know it had been talked about before that, and I'm not going to say it was the first time they'd ever been, but as far as Done. public as, yeah, as right. far as publicly for sale, this was the first time that. Well, and I'm, I'm actually interested with sauce. you guys uh, to get into that next in the panel episode and kind of even get into like that progression of that technology, how it ended up there, really what it is. I think it that changed the game. It, it changed the for, game though. for, for, for oh, I, I did. not just myself, but I think our listeners, you know, not everybody's really familiar with, with, with the kind of that, that progression of extracts and now all these different terms that are associated with it and how they're processed. And a lot of it's just, you know, what are you comfortable working with material wise or whatever? But I think for, for our listeners, that's going to be, you know, very interesting for them. Yeah, no, and it's interesting to see kind of where we've come from to where right. we are today. And right, the well, bullshit that people, people were so me. blown away. They just, uh, you know, you guys won the competition, plain and simple. Yeah, no, it was, <laughs> it was, it was awesome. Man. It was really cool. But uh, the two that really stand out to me and mean the most to me um, was Spanibus and, I, I knew uh, you were gonna say and the High one. Times Cup. Uh, sure, um, sure, awesome. You know, what year did you win in the High Times Cup? Uh, so 2019, High Times came back. After uh was like a five year hiatus they had, Colorado pretty much kicked them out. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, I, we were at, we were at the original one. We know why I they can't kicked remember them out. If, it was, uh, yeah, I, was gonna say, I can't remember if I won Sativa and seventeen. It was a shit show. Seventeen, but they were gone for a little while. For no, sure. they didn't come back till nineteen, man. Yeah. When were they? When did they leave? So twenty fifteen was when uh, they came out in the med kind of sent out notes like, "Hey, don't have people selling stuff." Because I won Sativa right, extract, right, the yeah. last one right. that they weren't. That around. was a oh god. Yeah. So twenty fifteen was the last one. That it was like a real, okay. real high times cup, right? Yep, Where right. they have everybody has the booth set up and, you know, people are actually getting to experience the cannabis culture. Sure. Um, before Denver just completely annihilated it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, you know, they went on hiatus till 2019. And when they did, it was, it was a pretty big deal, man. We hadn't had high times here in years, dude. And so everybody and their brother wanted to compete. Yeah. Everybody. Went, yeah. There was a lot of entries. What'd you win with? Uh, we won with uh, Banana Kush. Uh, Such a great one. Purple Trop Cookies. What was the third one? I can't remember the third strain we won with that. <laughs> but we ended up winning first place in uh, all three of the songs. Bam, bam, bam. Okay. Slept it. Nice. Sativa Indica Hybrid, first place. Killer. That's killer. Killer. It, dude, it was. That's coming correct. 
Dude, that's unbelievable. That's common yeah. crap. Right. Nobody'd ever done that. Yeah, before. that's right, right, I mean, right. bro. And and again, you know, just to again, I, and that's why we kind of want to establish exactly who you are, where you came from, you know, kind of where where you know what you've accomplished, things like that, because that's what gives value to obviously then getting into, you know, kind of some of your values when it comes to extracts and how you got there. And now, you know, I think for our listeners, it's great that we've been able to kind of, you know, build up the story a bit and then bring in, you know, some of these experts and let you guys talk a bit about it and really explain kind of where and how and why we've got to where we're at. Yeah, no, hundred percent, man. So what are, uh, you know, it's funny cause I was going to ask how have you innovated the hash game, but that's just one of the ways when we get in the panel, we can actually talk about some yeah, different, yeah. cause you, you guys, I just know from knowing you, um, you guys have done, you guys do a ton of data collection. You do a ton of other things outside of just making the hash, which has really pushed you to maximize the efficiency in your hash game. I yeah. think, you know, I think just, especially with the amount of space you have, you know, what you guys do and how you guys operate is just a different level than a lot of other people. Um, you know, there's, there's certain folks that I talk about, um, who just know how the trichomes flow, you know, as opposed to just turning dials and looking at SOPs right, and right, going, Hey, right, this is an right, eight minute right. soak, uh, for, you know, at minus 40, you know, da, 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 da. Well, there's- you guys, you guys have done enough and you have enough data that you're, that you can really plug in a lot of different things. So as far as innovation, we can discuss that in the next episode, yeah. but what outside of hash, what are some of your outside interests? What is Jeremy Johnson like to do for fun. And what are some of the other things you have going on? I know what they are, but I want to hear you talk about it too. <laughs> uh, honestly, man, my, my main focus out of uh, the weed world is my family, man. Mm-hmm. Killer. Yeah. You're a huge family, man. I see Good. you see you doing cool sh- stuff with your kids all the time. Oh dude. I, I think that hockey, you know, f- basketball, all the stuff to, to me, life is all about experiences. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. that's to yeah. me, that's the meaning of life it's is about to memories, experience yeah, experiences. It and, and, and build those experiences and the memories and, knowledge from doing all those things. So I really try to expose my kids to as much different things as they can and and try to get them to kind of think outside the box, right? Because not everything you're taught in school is proper. Right. Right. You know, there's multiple ways to think about things. You know, I think one of the things that really changed me on a personal level was in college, um, and, and taking, um, uh, philosophy class, right? Sure. When I walked into philosophy class, I really had really one kind of narrow minded way of, of looking at things. Right. Which was the only way I'd ever known to look at things. Right. And so really getting in there and understanding different perspectives, different ways to look at things and really thinking outside the box, it can really help you understand people better. Right. Absolutely. Um, hundred percent. And, and change your, change your own perspective. I yeah. think it's helped me keep positive in tough times and right, really right. kind of help me push myself in life, man. I can, you know, I can tell you're a passionate person and, and you're obviously, you know, passionate about what you do, passionate about your family. And, and, and that I really do appreciate because I feel like, you know, we've seen a lot of people come and go in this industry and, and uh, you know, we've all been through the ringer a bit and, it, and it's really taken the people that, you know, I believe still have a passion for this and really do care and are just in it for, you know, nothing but the money that are actually in it for the plant. So you well, know, I very much appreciate you coming out and sharing your story. And you've actually kind of outside of what a lot of other people in this industry do, you've actually kind of diversified as I remember a little bit. So little you, bit, you have some business outside of cannabis that has nothing to do with yeah. it. And I, yeah. I, I want to give you the chance to give it a little plug. So, Cause we go. you're still a local boy. No, hundred percent. And it kind of goes back to, and you ask if I've ever been in trouble for this. I, like I said, I've been fortunate enough. My brother, unfortunately, you know, he got caught up. He got cultivating charges in 2008. He was mm. growing six plants, mm-hmm. wow. which at the time was a felony. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so it kind of limited him being able to go on this ride with me. Right. But you guys, right. but you guys are still on your own ride. We are, man. And, you know, he's been my sidekick from day one, man. Him and I were always getting it. And, uh, you know, he, he uh, he's always been doing the plumbing thing, man. Yep. And I got to a, a spot where I was able to, to help fund him and help him start the business. And we have a plumbing company that we have together and Killer. he crushes it. Dude. I would, dude, I've always thought that was really cool. I remember hitting you up when you uh, posted about it and I was like, Hey dude, are you what, like, are you getting out of harmony? What's going on? You're like, no dude, no, I'm, yeah, just, yeah, I'm just, I'm just doing other things, dude. You know? So that's actually one of the things I've always thought was really cool about you is, you know, you, you know, you have some diversification, you have some other stuff going on with your brother. I think that's really neat. 
If we've taken the weed thing and kind of translate it to that, right? So uh, our plumbing company is Copi Plumbing, Mm -hmm. and it's short for Colorado Pioneers. Mm -hmm. Nice. I like it. I like it. Back in the day. Listen to it, folks. Copi. 2008, 2009, we formed our little group of friends that we all kind of grew together, and we called ourselves the Pioneers. Mm -hmm. And so when we started the plumbing company, it really was uh, uh, paying homage to kind of our roots of where we came from and what really got us to where we are now, man. That's awesome, And so we, we take those, you know. The same passion that we have for the right. plant that goes into the plumbing too, man. And as weird <laughs> awesome. as that sounds, man, like, no, it doesn't. I, I love it. Dude, our guys, bro, they're so passionate about plumbing. It'd blow your mind, dude. I think we have, I think we're coming up on 165 star reviews on Google for, for plumbing, man. Which wow. Is That's wow. Great. Awesome. wow. I do. Well, I, I mean, now, I've, now I know. Now I, yeah, I know too. yeah. I've kept it on for a while Collins? just cause <laughs> you know, I see how you do. And I, I think it's dude, I think it's fantastic. You know, finally, I guess to close it out, what does the future hold for Jeremy Johnson and family and harmony? Uh, you know, I'm really trying to, to grow this and I want to bring this passion to the masses, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people that are MSOs and they all are corporate. They're all doing everything off spreadsheets. <clears throat> I hate that bullshit, man. If you're, mm-hmm. if you're growing off a spreadsheet, you already lost me. Right? You use right. the da- you use the data for different, different purposes. Well, here's 100%. the thing I look at it. There's obviously science into it, but there's absolutely an art aspect to it as well. And that's not lost on you. And I think that's, you know, you have to take the data and you have to have a science driven approach. This is chemistry when it comes to extract, et cetera. But to think that there's no art about it as well, which is what you were mentioning, you could go off straight SOPs and say, well, it's supposed to be this amount of soap, or you can actually be, an extractor and have the framework that's there and work within it, but use your, your touch, your feel, your passion, your understanding to really get that no, top level. Extractor. Man. And you know, at the end of the day, all these people are trying to figure out how they can get four or five pounds of light. It's like, well, that's, that's great, man. That you're Sounds like numbers. biomass to me, <laughs> but what's the quality look like, man? Because I have yet to see something yield anything remotely close to that. Then I'm like, damn, like this is mm-hmm. well, and, well, and, and it's funny because Jayhawk and I'll talk about it all the time. You know, you could have two guys that have a thousand, you know, I could give you a thousand grams and this guy could give you 2000 grams. But if you get 7% off mine and 3% off his, you still win with me. Oh yeah. You know, and that's why we always refer to ourselves as oil farmers, oil farmers, because you know, for us, we talk about that as being the most significantly. It's what's of horticultural significance in this plant period. Even deeper than that, our our grow team likes to joke. They're, they're terp farmers, right? hundred percent. Yeah. Because that's our primary focus and goal is the terpene retention, sure. right? Terp- yeah. terpene because retention. That's, that's the most important aspect to this plant. You know? And what, and what, what a nice, what a nice ending right there, right there. So there's even, you're, you're getting a little bit of a glimpse into the panel episode and, you know, you can see what's truly of importance to Jeremy. He's going to be able to get into that tech and just how they are capturing those terpenes, how, how you're freezing that in time to really give that expression to, uh, you know, to the end user. So 100%. again, Thank you very much for coming in. Thanks for having me. Um, uh, exciting episode for all of us. We love bringing p- the people in and uh, excited for the panel episode. Dude, thanks so much for coming in. We appreciate it, all the listeners. And where can people always, find you? Lastly, where can people find oh, yeah, you? Instagram, yeah, yeah. things like that. Yeah. Yeah. One, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah Instagram is Harmony underscore extracts. Uh, Facebook, you can just search for Harmony Extracts. Uh, if you go on to HarmonyExtracts.com, um, there's like a product locator on there. So you can go and check out the stores that we're in. 